Ukraine needs the Meteor missile ASAP. Ukraine wants to reach out and touch Russian aircraft from hundreds of kilometers away, but there's a problem. The West's longest-range missiles come with more red tape and software integration headaches than a Microsoft update. President Zelensky recently admitted something Ukraine watchers have suspected for months. His Air Force still can't get its hands on a true long-range air-to-air -air missile. In his words, quote, we cannot yet obtain an air-to-air -air missile with the range we need, end quote. He wasn't naming names, but everyone in the defense world knew what he meant. The MBDA Meteor, or the American AIM-120D, the crown jewels of NATO's beyond visual range missile arsenal, don't work in Ukraine at the moment. Hey friends, Wes here, and France has offered the MICA, which is solid but short-legged. Its range tops out around 80 kilometers, which in modern air combat terms is practically a knife fight. Zelensky's problem isn't that the West lacks long-range missiles, it's that the systems Ukraine does have, like older F-16s and Mirage 2000s, can't fully unlock their potential. Yet, it's a bit like giving someone a Formula One engine but no car to mount it in. So let's talk specs before we talk politics. The AIM-120D-3 is the latest American AMRAAM variant reportedly reaching out to about 160 to 180 kilometers. Though Raytheon keeps the real numbers classified, the slightly older C8 variant sits in roughly the same league. Now, Europe's Meteor, built by MBDA, officially boasts a range of 200 kilometers or more. But those figures are best-case scenarios, the kind missile engineers quote after a few glasses of champagne. The real-world range depends on how high and how fast the missile is launched, whether the target is head-on or fleeing, and how aggressively it maneuvers. Firing from 10 kilometers up in a lumbering bomber? Sure, you'll get 200 kilometers. Fire from low altitude at a twisting fighter? Maybe 70. So what actually matters in combat is not maximum range, but really something called the no escape zone, or the NEZ. That's the radius inside which a target can't outrun the missile no matter how hard it tries. Meteor's NEZ is legendary, far wider than anything else flying in NATO service. Which brings us to the real problem. Ukraine doesn't yet own a jet capable of using it. Here's the thing about Meteor and the AIM-120D. They're not plug and play. You can't just tape one under the wing of a donated F-16 and call it a day. Meteor integration requires some pretty deep software work between the missile's electronics and the aircraft's radar. Oh, and the aircraft's fire control computer and data bus. That's why only a handful of jets can use it right now. The Eurofighter Typhoon, the Rafael F3R, and the Gripen CD and ENF. Even Germany, one of the developers, only managed its first meteor test firing in 2024 after years of work. Now, Ukraine's newly arriving F-16s, many of them older Block 20 conversions from European stocks, simply don't have the electronics or the radar modes to support the Meteor. They'll likely carry the AIM-120C instead. It's really the best that can be integrated quickly. Now, the Mirage 2000s on loan from France can only use MICA missiles, which are competent but limited in reach. So Ukraine is caught in a strange limbo. It's getting Western aircraft, but they're not the latest blocks that can use the latest missiles. The Meteor's advantage isn't just raw range, it's what's under the hood. Most air-to-air -air missiles are solid rocket engines. They burn fast, they fly fast, and then they coast. The Meteor uses a ramjet engine that can throttle. That means it keeps pushing through the mid-course phase, saving fuel for the end game when the target is trying its hardest to escape. The result is a massive no-escape zone, sometimes double that of the AIM-120. If the AMRAAM is a sprinter, the Meteor is a marathon runner with a second wind. That's why every European Air Force that can afford it wants it, and why Ukraine does too. It's the missile that could give Ukrainian pilots a real standoff advantage against Russian Su-35s and MiG-31s. But without a compatible launch platform, it's like owning a sword you can't draw. There's good news on the horizon, though. Sweden's promised Gripen CD fighter slated for delivery around 2026 can fire the Meteor right out of the box. Once those aircraft are in Ukrainian hands, Meteor suddenly becomes viable. 
And because Sweden is already integrated the system years ago, the learning curve will be much shorter. Now, the Gripen was practically designed for countries in Ukraine's situation. Smaller air forces facing larger adversaries, needing maximum punch from minimal infrastructure. If the timeline holds, we could see Ukrainian meteors flying sometime in late 2026 or early 2027. That's assuming political will, production slots, and export approvals all line up. Until then, Ukraine will rely on the AIM-120C from the United States and its allies. Good missiles, but not in Meteor's league. Even if you hand a pilot a Meteor or an AIM-120D, it's really useless without something else. Eyes in the sky. Long-range air combat isn't just really missiles. It's about having that targeting data. To hit a target 150 kilometers away, you need to see it first and reliably track it. Fighter radars can only do so much, especially against low-flying or stealthy Russian aircraft. That's where the airborne early warning and control planes come in. The big radar platforms that feed data to fighters and tell them exactly where to shoot. Ukraine is finally getting two thanks to Sweden's donation of the Saab 340 AWACS, announced back in spring of 2024. Once fully operational, it'll work hand-in-hand -hand with the F-16s or future Gripens, providing that long-range radar picture that makes true beyond visual range combat possible. Without AEW, a meteor on your wing is like a sniper rifle with no scope. To understand how this all plays out, look at what happened during the Pakistan-India aerial skirmish on May 7, 2025. Pakistan flew its J-10C fighters with long-range PL-15 missiles and used 12 AEW aircraft for radar coverage. India fielded Rafael's with Meteors, theoretically the superior missile, but they only had six AWACS planes and limited automated queuing. Despite better hardware on paper, India struggled to fully leverage Meteor's potential because of information gaps. That's the lesson Ukraine is absorbing now. Range means nothing without radar integration and networked targeting. The country's air defensive architecture is improving fast, but true long-range air combat requires synchronized systems, fighters, AEW, data links, and munitions all speaking the same language. Okay, and then there's the politics of permission. Even if Ukraine had compatible fighters, there's the small matter of politics. Long-range air-to-air missiles, especially the Meteor and the AIM-120D, are tightly controlled by their manufacturers and governments. Export requires explicit permission, not just for the missile, but for each platform it's integrated on. That's why the US hasn't yet approved the AIM-120D for Ukraine's F-16s, not just because of cost or secrecy, but because every integration involves proprietary software and classified data sharing. The same is true for the Meteor. France, Germany, and the UK would all need to sign off and that's no small feat when one of the potential users is operating in an active war zone. So while everyone agrees Ukraine needs reach, nobody wants to see their top missile tech winding up as debris somewhere near Belgorod, waiting to be reverse engineered. But I want to be clear here, the situation isn't hopeless, it's transitional. Ukraine's air force is in the middle of the most dramatic modernization effort of any nation since 1945. Within two years, it'll be flying Western Standard F-16s supported by Saab, AWACS platforms, with the Gripen CD possibly arriving soon after. Layer in Meteor or AIM-120D integration, and you're looking at a completely different air war by 2027. One where Ukrainian pilots can strike first and disengage safely. Until then, it's about bridging the gap with what's available. AMRAM C8s for the F-16s, MICAs for the Mirages, and the continued use of ground-based air defenses to thin out Russian aircraft at range. The long game is clear. Build a Western-style kill chain step-by-step step until the missiles, the radars, and the fighters all operate as one. You can almost picture the conversation in Kyiv right now. Um, we'd like the Meteor, please. Of course, but first you'll need the Gripen. Uh, fine, we'll take that too. And you're gonna need an AWACS to guide it. Uh, done. And a software integration team, and export licenses, and a German coffee maker. Oh, and three years. That's modern defense procurement in a nutshell. But Ukraine's nothing if not persistent. This is the same country that turned civilian drones into tank killers and built Frankensams out of spare parts. It will get there. It always does. But right now, Ukraine's air war is about survival. Defending cities, intercepting cruise missiles, and denying Russian aircraft free reign. 
But the future is about controlled disguise. The Meteor and the AIM-120D represent that next phase. They're the tools of an air force that doesn't just defend, but dictates the fight. When Ukraine finally pairs those long-range missiles with the right jets, backed by AWACS surveillance and NATO standard coordination, the balance of air power over Eastern Europe will tilt permanently. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And if history's any guide, when that day comes, someone in Moscow will look at the radar screen, see a blip vanish 200 kilometers away, and realize the era of Russian air dominance just ended. With one word, meteor. That's it for today, friends. Subscribing to channels like mine and other human creators that you like helps push back against the AI slot tidal wave that's coming. It also helps me counteract Russian disinformation by ensuring Ukraine's fight stays top of mind for millions of my monthly viewers. So consider hitting that button and, as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.